computers obviously are very sensitive to the power that we have going through them. And one of the best things that you can get from a preventive maintenance perspective is at a bare minimum, a surge protector. And something you may really want to consider is an uninterruptible power supply or UPS. With the UPS, you can make sure that your system will be up and running even if you lose power to your facility. So one of the things you want to do is check the power load. How many different devices do you have? Do you have a printer? Do you have a monitor? Do you have a computer to plug in? What is the load that's required for those? And every single UPS and power strip and surge protector all have electrical ratings that they will be able to provide. You'll be able to see exactly that by looking at the specifications of how many amps it supports, how many watts it supports. Almost all of them have circuit breakers as well. So if you happen to have a surge or it's using too much power, it will disconnect so that it doesn't overload the capabilities of that device. You really want to make sure that this backup system, the UPS or the surge protector, is really cooled and ventilated well. There are batteries inside of these. There are certainly a lot of heat that's generated by this. Make sure that it's not sitting with things on top of it, papers on top of it, on a carpeted floor. You want to have it so it's able to breathe and operate as efficiently as possible. When working in your computing environment with your laptop or your desktop system, one of the things you want to consider is electrostatic discharge, or ESD. This is dependent on temperature, on humidity. There are a number of things that you can get to help minimize the electrostatic discharge in your environment. You may want to consider doing that if you work in an environment that's very sensitive to those. Another thing to consider is electromagnetic interference. This is different than static. This is a type of signaling that is creating electromagnetic signals. Usually power sources and magnets can be sources of these. You want to keep those completely away from your computer. Magnets are a bad thing. And being very close to very high-powered systems, if you're sitting somewhere near where your power is coming into an entire building, you may notice your computer isn't working the way you would expect. You want to avoid any of those types of environments. Another thing that's important in your environment is airflow. We've talked about this before. It's a really important piece of this, and it's a very easy thing to consider. Just keep all of the dirt and dust away so that your computer stays as cool as possible. And lastly, the air quality is important. If you're not a smoker or you don't work on a manufacturing floor, you may not even think about this. But there are certain environments where airflow becomes in the, the air quality becomes very important. You want to make sure there, there's no contaminants in the air and there's no smoke or anything that might get into your computer to cause problems later on. It is so important that the data that's on our system is backed up. We want to be sure that we always have a copy of what's there. There's a lot of different ways to back up data. We can back up single files onto a separate media that we can then pull back later. We could back up an entire disk. Every file on the disk, everything that's on that disk, back it up somewhere else. A lot of people do also disk images, where they essentially take a photocopy of the disk. They take every bit and byte, and they duplicate it into a file. And if they ever need to recover from that, they can replace the entire disk if they want to from, from a base basic system so they can recover everything. And usually you're doing almost all of these. You pull off some files to a certain place. Maybe you take certain parts of the disk. And maybe you also have an image so that you've got different places where this data is backed up. Most people will do daily backups. They'll even do weekly backups. So you may do one big backup that's a full backup every Sunday. And then from Monday through Saturday, you're doing incremental backups of just what's changed. And then when Sunday comes along, we'll do another big, complete weekly backup at that point. It depends on how you'd like to back up and what makes sense for you. For you, you might want to do a full backup every day. It just depends on how important your data is for you. Those full backups and incremental backups become important because if you do a full backup and then little incremental backups after that, if you ever need to go back and recover, you may have to go all the way back to the full and then apply the changes that were made to finally get back to where you were. So you don't want to have one full backup and then 30 incremental backups. Then it becomes a little bit more complex if you ever need to recover a file. It may be more important to do a full backup every week and then little incremental backups during the week. Some people will take their files and certainly back them up to a local facility. Some will do it off-site. They'll take the disk or the, the files or the tape they backed it up to 
and they'll take it to another physical location. That way, if something happens, there's a flood, there's a fire, there's something that occurs, a theft at your local facility, you've still got your files backed up somewhere else. They're safe and sound. Some people do it in the cloud. They do it across the internet, and those files are stored on a third-party service where everything is encrypted. And if they ever need to recover them, they simply log onto the internet and pull the files back down again. Let's review and see if we can answer some questions about preventive maintenance. Our first question is, what is the best way to maintain a properly cooled processor? Well, if we're talking about cooling, then we're certainly talking about airflow. We need to make sure we've got the best possible airflow through our computer all the time. Our next question is, what's the best way to maintain security patches? Well, I guess we could always go back out when to the internet or whenever we'd like to see where those patches are. But really, the best possible way and the quickest way is to always have our automatic updates configured to pull down those security patches the moment they're available. And the last question, before closing up a computer, what's a good preventive maintenance task? Well, there's a number of things that you can do before closing up that system. Even if you go in there to install some memory, you might want to vacuum up, clean things out, check the cables and connections, make sure it's running optimally before you finally close that system down and put the screws into it. That covers what we needed to know for our preventive maintenance module. We've gone through everything from physical inspection and updates all the way down to our power devices, our environment, and our backup procedures. If you'd like to participate in any of our message boards, you'd like to see any of our free a videos or send me an email, you can visit our website and visit us on freeaplus.com.